This week on Pop and Play, we're talking detective stories. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you sound so professional when you start us out. I love that. I know. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best, Ira Glass. This week on Pop and Play, we'll be talking about intergenerational play. Our guest this week is Haney Yoon. <laughs> Something like that? <laughs> Oh my god. What are we even talking about? <laughs> We're talking <laughs> All right. All right. On this episode of Pop and Play, we are talking about detectives, right? Yes. Detectives. Yes. Uh, detectives in the context of play, in the context of different types of media that people encounter and experience across different generations, across different sort of ages and age groups. Mhm. Um, but detectives, you know, detectives exist on all sorts of different kinds of media, right? They exist on TV. They're on uh, certainly books for many, many years, comics, podcasts, uh, podcasts. I know you're a big fan of uh, true crime, <laughs> true crime podcasts. Mm -hmm. We should have started in the form in like the style of a true, uh, true crime podcast. Mm -hmm. How how is that? <laughs> you need you need some like really kind of dramatic sound effects. Dung. <laughs> the phone rang. Haney didn't expect to have a phone call that night, but what she didn't know is her life would never be the same after she answered. Now I'm thinking about Scream. <laughs> anyway. So this episode, we're talking about detectives and detective stories, whether those exist in um, on TV, in comics, in books, true crime podcasts. Um, audible books. Audible books, right? Not just books that you read, but also sometimes books that you listen to. Uh -huh. Haney, let's start out by just getting a sense of how you engage with detective stories. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I was thinking about the intergenerational component of it, and I realized that I actually have talked about detectives with a lot of different people across oh, yeah. a lot of different age groups, because I think it's just one of those things like picking up clues, solving a mystery, you know, finding out something that nobody knows about yet yeah. and like getting to the bottom of something, yeah. I think is like a human pursuit, right? That we all like to do because I don't like true crime because I like people getting murdered. <laughs> Let's be clear. <laughs> I like true crime because I like the idea of people solving a mystery. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all, I think there is something kind of maybe human about wanting to sort of solve a mystery, mm -hmm. solve, like figure out a secret, figure out something, on, you know, that you couldn't understand before. Yeah. That's a good way to think about yeah, this. Yeah, it's like those invisible ink pens. It's a blank piece how, of paper. How is it like that? It's a blank piece of paper. You don't know anything about it. And then you scratch it and you see a message that says, I will murder you. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you said you don't like to murder, but I'm, I'm starting kidding. to think that maybe you do. <laughs> okay, so tell me some detectives you admire. Well, when you just were talking about um, picking up clues and things, I, I did immediately think about the Hardy Boys mm. because and I'm also thinking back to our episode on um, uh, choose your own adventure books. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but the two books that I would read incessantly when I was a kid was choose your own adventure books or I would read the Hardy Boys. And so the Hardy Boys were really fun, you know, kind of set of detectives that I spent a lot of time with as a kid. And I'm also a big sucker for Batman. I think Batman, you know, often referred to as the world's greatest detective. Uh, Who refers to Batman as the world's greatest detective? I've never it, heard that. Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> we, for the listeners, Amy and I have been arguing about whether or not Batman is a detective for months now. Batman and is not a detective. He, uh, how is he a detective? Let me ask a different question. <laughs> what? Who do you think of when you think of Batman? Who do I think of? Yeah. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> think of dark and brooding and gloomy. Right, right. And I think of like a superhero slash, I guess he's not really a vigilante, but I don't know. He doesn't mean, seem like a He doesn't read detective to me <laughs> well speaking of reading the the first <laughs> batman comics were called detective comics so the whole deal was he was a detective um are but, you lying but, to me <laughs> no it's true that's that's what i said look it up uh yeah no for sure so like th I, but i think this is a really the reason i asked that sort of who do you think of is there's a character there are characters we're talking about batman right now so we'll talk about batman but there he's are not a detective <laughs> How dare you? Of all these qualities. And then when we tell stories about these characters, we can elevate or we can sort of reduce different aspects of their characters. And it does seem to be that right now, the primary way in which Batman is showcased in the world is the sort of 
kind of brutal, uh, uh, brooding, angry guy. Uh, but there's been lots of different versions of Batman that was much more about him as a thinker, him as sort of a problem solver, him as a detective. Uh, and I kind of I gravitate towards that version. So I told you about uh, detectives that I like, and I've also said a few things about the qualities of those detectives that I like. Say, say a bit about the detectives in your life. I mean, I, I mean, I used to read like Encyclopedia Brown and watch Inspector yeah. Gadget, and those are the detectives of my life. But I think more recently, you know, I think I've said this on the podcast before. I've watched like 15 seasons of Criminal Minds oh, yeah, uh, yeah. during the pandemic, and so now my new favorite detective is Dr. Spencer Reed, and he's one of the detectives, not like a Batman detective, she's, like a she's real... She's doing air quotes <laughs> yeah. for the audio De medium Batman here. Batman in air quotes detective. Then Dr. Spencer Reed is an actual detective who <laughs> solves murders. Um, and he's part of the behavioral analysis unit of the FBI, I think. And so I think he's like one of my favorite detectives because he... What do you like about him? Yeah, He thinks he has a file in his mind. He's like really smart. Sounds like Batman, but keep going. Um, <laughs> it's not the same at all. He doesn't punch people. He punches people with his words. Oh, so maybe you are a detective. You punch me with your words all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Deduction. <laughs> I'm a detective. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm into that. So it's something about people that think people yeah. that uh as you said earlier sort of uncover kind of secrets they try to piece together um seemingly disparate ideas or different um uh, pieces of evidence to try to draw connections and find patterns yeah right? it's like a puzzle and we also are, are you know maybe i'm uh also attracted to the detectives that occasionally punch things whereas you're attracted to the detectives that sort of use their words and use their mind to sort of um, solve the case mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there is a detective that neither of us mentioned mm -hmm. that I don't know that this detective would make either of our list, but I think it's an interesting detective and that is Columbo. Yes. And that's, a, that's a detective we're going to talk about this mm -hmm. week, right? Yeah. So should we talk about what Columbo is? Yeah. T say a bit about Columbo. Well, I don't know if I should be the one that says a lot about <laughs> Columbo, but Columbo played by Peter, the late Peter Falk. Um, is a detective in the true sense of the word. Um, and basically, I'm going to go with physical characteristics. He always wears yeah. a trench coat. Yeah. His hair is always disheveled. I think he always has a cigar in hand, right? Yeah. Um, he has a wife in the show that is never seen. And he basically uses his mind to outmaneuver criminals and solve the crime. Yeah, he's one of these detectives that, um, uh, you, you know, starting out with the physical is kind of important, right? Because his, his the, the idea is that he sort of presents as if he's kind of a nobody, he presents as if he's a little disheveled or sort of unkempt, but he's brilliant and he's always thinking and he's thinking at a speed that is is at a different speed than everyone else is thinking at. He's mm -hmm. sort of ahead of everybody, but he looks like he's behind everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes, I feel like that is quintessential Columbo, yeah. right? Is that he's always underestimated yeah. and he knows it and he uses it to its advantage, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Is that everybody around him thinks he's kind of dumb and aloof and doesn't know anything. And that's what he uses to basically trick everybody else. Right. So, you know, his tagline, what's his tagline? Oh, and another thing. <laughs> like yeah. that, right? I didn't say it like Columbo, but just one more just thing. Just one more thing. That's what it was. Yeah. So you look like you, it seems like he's done with you. It seems like you're in the clear, yeah. but then he turns around and is like, "Just one more thing. Right. You're a killer." <laughs> but he's also not the kind of detective that tries to sort of use that as some sort of a power over other people, mm -hmm. and he's always humble in his success. So like he he's like like you said, he's like he's ahead of everybody. People assume he's an idiot, but he never like lashes out at them. He just sort of gradually over time sort of wears them out until he succeeds. I really love what you said about the wears people down because that's basically what he does. He just like <laughs> wears them down until they can't take it anymore. And then they're basically like, fine, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So for our listeners, tell us about the arc of an episode of Columbo. So, first of all, I love that you and I are providing the answers to these questions because it, if it's not already clear, Haney and I are not 
Columbo <laughs> experts. We are extreme novices here, but we're we're trying to give you some information because we're going to talk to experts in a few moments. Um, but a Columbo episode has a, a really particular structure, and, and that structure begins with the murder that we get to see. The audience gets to sort of see the murder as it happens, as it unfolds. And then Columbo comes onto the scene and begins sort of working the case. And so it kind of has this, this particular structure where you're getting to see him figure out things. And, and he's figuring out things that you don't necessarily realize either at the, at the moment of the murder, but you sort of get to see it all unfold, see how he comes to, to solve the case. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, in preparation, we did watch Candidate for Crime, yeah. which I guess I hear the word on the street is that introductions to Columbo come through that episode for some reason. It's a good starter. It's a good mm-hmm. starter episode. So, so another thing we should probably mention about Columbo is this, uh, if you haven't seen this, you know, it was, what do they call that? Episodic? Like each episode is self-contained and mm-hmm. it's sort of like a, almost a movie length, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it aired in the seventies. So, you know, it would come on the air, you'd have your sort of hour and a half and then you sort of have to wait till the next one kind of came out. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, despite that, it is kind of this artifact that has persisted, right? There are people that continue to watch talk about, write blogs, write you know, social media posts. There are a lot about of blogs Columbo. about Columbo. Yeah. <laughs> so why are we talking about Columbo as an intergenerational artifact then? <laughs> what I are we think, doing here? I can tell you why I'm personally invested in Columbo as an intergenerational artifact because yeah. I barely knew anything about it. Um, my brother-in-law, Mark, and his son, Arlo. That's like how I got introduced to it. They would talk yeah. about it all the time. So you mentioned Mark and Arlo, who are going to be two of our guests on this episode. And our third guest is Sonali Rajan, a, a returning guest uh, on Pop and Play, is also a huge Columbo fan and frequently watches Columbo with her with her son. And, and my daughter often you know, is in her, their apartment and ends up watching Columbo <laughs> with them as well. And I think that's what like certain TV shows or certain media does for people sometimes, right? It brings generations together. I think there's some that just are, you know, that provide a space and a platform for a lot of different people to engage with. And this just happens to be one of those anecdotally. (laughs) In our (laughs) in of three. (laughs) That has been intergenerational. Great. Well, I think let's, you know, bring our guests on and and let's actually hear from experts about Columbo, right? Somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. Right on. So we are very excited to welcome three very special, very excellent guests to this episode of Pop and Play on Detective Stories. Our first guest is, who will be no uh, no stranger to our Pop and Play audience, is Sonali Rajan, our friend, our colleague, our confidant. And I'll be honest with you, Sonali and I are, are, are good friends outside of these occasional record sessions, and she has practically demanded for now three seasons of pop and play that mm-hmm. we do an episode where we talk a little bit about Columbo. So what you're about to hear is is very much her fault. Hopefully uh, <laughs> I would like you well. all to know it took three seasons. I'm a little <laughs> insulted given how close Nathan and I are <laughs> and how much time we spent together that it took this much convincing. But thank you in advance. <laughs> We're delighted to have you. Thanks for having me guys. Very delighted to have you. We also have equally amazing Columbo fans in the house as well. So we have Mark Maynard over there, and he is a co-owner of a really, really great restaurant in Ypsilanti called Bellflower. Um, Highly recommend. They have awesome milk bread. Um, I wish I could eat it right now. (laughs) Um, And then we also have Arlo, who is 10, going on 11, right? 11 in December, (laughs) I think. Um, And a fifth grader. Um, maybe we should find out some, Arlo, what do you do? What is your occupation right now? What do you do for a job? Math. (laughs) (laughs) Good answer. Sounds like a good answer. Okay. Personal agenda vendetta. We usually do a segment called Pop or Nop, where we ask our guests to comment on a lightning round speed of questions. But instead, we decided that we wanted them to settle just one question, which is, is Batman a detective? No. No? <laughs> no? Why not? Arlo, tell us why not. Because he just caught people. And like, he would just like break into their home and attack them. Oh my <laughs> goodness. 
So um, he's kind of like a vigilante villain. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. I think you should let Mark say his piece too. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not up to speed enough to say. I didn't read the early ones, um, but I think the modern Batman. Yeah, I think it's more like um, vigilante stuff, as I as I remember. Like, I don't think he's solving. He's not solving mysteries. I don't recall. He's not using his what? mind to detect. And I think that's where Arlo and I, uh, I mean, okay, Nathan's about to like. <laughs> I'm Arlo, you seem like such a nice kid. I hate, I hate for us to get started in such a bad way here. Oh my goodness. And Sonali, you of all people, I can't believe you. You guys, I think trade me this in this might way. be the end of our friendship. This, might, this actually might do it. September, guys, September 19th. Okay. Batman the date. <laughs> is often described as the greatest detective the f Batman was was introduced in a comic called Detective Comics. His whole th yeah. thing is being a detective. The problem, of course, is that the some of the movies, some of the more recent movies, just sort of portray him as kind of a brutal, like brooding, you know, punching kind of guy. But no, Batman is always he's out there like solving these like cool, these really complex crimes. There's a really great um, uh, comic series by Jeff Loeb called The Long Halloween. And it's sort of a series of comics where this murder happens and it happens on Halloween. And then every holiday after that, a new murder happens and Batman's trying really hard to figure out who it is and to stop these murders and he can't figure it out. And he goes through all his sort of the rogue gallery of villains to try to solve this and eventually sort of uncovers it and stops the crime. Highly recommend. Batman is absolutely a detective. I'm sorry that you all are wrong. <laughs> And I apologize. I apologize to the pop and play listeners here who had to sit and hear that slander against Batman. I can't believe it. So we want to talk with you all not about Batman as much as I would like to have us just discuss um, Batman. Uh, I think today the topic is going to be Columbo. I certainly wasn't super familiar with Columbo before we started preparing for this conversation. It seems possible that some of our listeners aren't familiar with kind of the the shtick of Columbo and mm. the structure of Columbo. So can you maybe yeah. tell us a little bit about what is Columbo? How does it kind of go down? And then also why it's something that's so important to your life? Yes. So so Columbo is this, you know, it's a, it was a detective series show that ran for over the course of a, two or three decades. Um, and essentially the sort of shtick of a Columbo episode is that, so Columbo is a, a lieutenant with the LAPD and he's this disheveled sort of looking guy, always in a trench coat, smoking a cigar or like chewing a cigar. Um, in every episode, you know right away who the murderer is. And um, the murder happens usually within the first like 10 minutes or so of the episode. And then the rest of the episode is Columbo using his brilliance to basically catch the murder. And then... Um, and then I guess for me, you know, I grew up watching Columbo with my parents and my sisters. And I think I was about a little younger than Arlo when I, when I started watching, probably like eighth, third or fourth grade. My my now seven-year-old, um, when he was born and I was up really late and, you know, you're like trying to feed this kid and you're just awake, whatever. I would like put on these episodes of Columbo when he was a <laughs> newborn and my husband um, still laughs, but he was like, he's going to think that Peter Falk is like part of our family. And I'm like, well, he's kind of, <laughs> he is kind of like part of our family. <laughs> like that's not entirely wrong. But I think for me growing up and still to this day, there is something very comforting about Columbo as a character and as a show. And as our listener, we all, our listeners know my, most of my work is very dark and the sort of issues I spend a lot of time thinking about. So there's something very like escapist and low stress that yeah. I really appreciate about a Columbo episode because it's like, you know it'll be resolved, and um, and then I think probably the other thing, and is just that Columbo as a character, he's a really kind person with a very clear moral compass. He's also very, someone who's actively anti-gun, which, as a gun violence prevention researcher, I really <laughs> appreciate as like a quality. I would argue, even for my parents, probably were like, "Yeah, watch this show," because this these are good qualities. He works yeah. hard. He's kind. And I think just there wasn't a lot of ego driving his his actions, um, but he was very bright and he was secure in how bright he was and wasn't um, 
trying to be, be anything other than he was. And he just did the job and followed the, the, the clues wherever they led. I mean, he was just a really hard worker. But I, I just used Columbo as a way to teach my kids because it's like, here's skills that I don't have. Like, huh. watch this. He was just always a presence in my life, um, <laughs> like a television detective, obviously. But because um, I always associate him with um, holidays of my family. And uh, our family, uh, different podcasts, but like, like most families, there are difficulties, but like, I would always, I have memories of like retreating into like Columbo when I was a kid. I don't know. And, and also I think he resonates. Uh, I have OCD. And I think that that's part, like he, I was rewatching the second episode the other day and in it, he says, I'm a worrier. And he's just always thinking all the time about different scenarios and things that could be happening. And I think that that's something that I, that I took comfort in. Um, Arlo, how about you? Um, Who is Columbo? Columbo's kind of like a guy who I always wonder about. Because, like, I always wonder, like, if they're ever going to show the wife. In it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. That's, it, right? That's totally something that we were wondering about, too, as we were watching it. Because they always use that as a storyline. Yeah, but the wife is never there. Like. Does she ever appear? Do you no, I don't think so. Um, they... They released another series when he refused to do it or when he backed away from the series, the the production company that owned Columbo decided to do Mrs. Columbo Mysteries. I had the opportunity to, to meet him once and then we've talked on the, he and I talked on the phone a couple of times. Oh, wow. Um, but he, he, he did not like um, that series. Wait, how did you get to talk to him on the phone? Uh, he gave me his phone number. What? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I feel like we've missed a few steps yeah, here. <laughs> how, did, how, did you, how did you get his phone number? Um, so I have, um, uh, we, Lynette, my wife and I published a magazine called Crime Wave, and we what? always interviewed people for the magazine. And um, I interviewed him, I don't know, 18 years ago, something like that. And we hit it off. He gave me his number and said to call him. So I called him. It's a pretty cool it, story. It, it wasn't wow. a real friendship. It was just like I would occasionally call and just talk briefly. Yeah, but you like I, would I, just I, occasionally I, call up Peter Falk. So that's not it's not so that's not nothing. You know that like <laughs> mind blown emoji? I am like that right now. Like literally, I cannot like when my family hears this. <laughs> I, I'm curious. You know, both you and uh, Sonali, you and Mark both mentioned that there was from this kind of parent perspective that Columbo represents some certain qualities that you've sort of felt like, I really want my my kids, I want, you know, people that I that I care about to have these qualities. I'm curious, Arlo, I want to ask you a question. Is there, mm-hmm. are there qualities of Columbo that you think that's really cool? I would kind of like to be like that. Um, he's like kind when he arrests people, kind of. Like my dad said one time he like arrested somebody and then he gave him like, wine and some food <laughs> and stuff. I love that ending. I can't remember the details, but at the end, Columbo brought him a bottle and they sat in the back of his car and had a drink on the way to, before they take, took him into jail. There was no, um, you know, no harsh lights and no interrogation, no threatening people, just this, this sense that we're kind of playing this game together and eventually I'm going to come out on top because I work harder and I never stop. I mean, there are a lot of little moments, just like the the person realizing like what's happening right. is like such a nice moment when they're like, oh, I, I totally underestimated you. Like, and now I get it. Now I understand exactly what's happening and you can see them kind of die inside. And that's always a, <laughs> a pleasant, a pleasant moment. I mean, I'm just, I'm just wondering how, how did you get convinced that this is a question for all of you that you wanted to get into Columbo and continue watching? Like, was it, did you watch it for the first time and think, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I've been waiting for? Or did it take a while? I mean, I like to think that eight-year-old Snolly probably was like, this is it, you guys. She just got it. In, she 30, just got it. in 31 years, I'm going to do a podcast. Episode <laughs> and I'm going to be ready. Um, I don't know, Mark, how it was for you, but for me, I feel like it was almost a habit. Of like, oh, it's just on and like, like I have this very vivid memory um, of like my mom being home after school. She would like let me do homework in front of like a Columbo episode because like it wasn't a thing that would distract me. It was just on in the background almost. So I feel like that 
I don't think it was like, oh, I'm I'm seeking to get into Columbo. I think it was just like a habit. Mm. And then it's like, well, when you watch it so many times, it's like osmosis. <laughs> so it's just there. <laughs> it's absorbent. I find a lot of comfort in watching like things that are familiar. And again, I think that might be my own personality and my own worry on things. Um, for me, there, there weren't enough of them that they, or at least anywhere I lived when I was young, that they were in like constant rotation on television. I remember seeing them first run when they were on like in the seventies and, and eighties. Um, so it was something, um, special because, um, it, it, at least before things were in reruns, like if you didn't see them, there was no VCR, there was right. no, I mean, it was just like, and you, you'd happen to catch it and I'd feel really happy that I just happened to to experience it. Arla, do you remember, do you think you liked it from the beginning? Do you remember watching your first episode and liking it? Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. This is a related question. If, do any of your friends watch Columbo? I don't know. Probably not. Yeah. I'm guessing probably not either. <laughs> what episode do you think will convince them to like it? Great like, question. If Great you question. had to be like, you had one chance to convert one of your friends into a Columbo fan, which episode would you recommend to them? Maybe the one where the the sister makes the brother walk in the room and then she shoots him for the window. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In um, season, no, I can't remember the, the old name. Fashioned um, murder. Wait, the sister murders uh, the brother? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. um, um, lady in waiting. Lady in waiting. Plus, the fashion in that one is amazing, Ooh, Haiti. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so why did the sister shoot the brother? Um, cause the brother was like not letting her marry who she wanted to marry, and then she had like enough, and then she like <laughs> turned off the light bulb so he couldn't turn it back on. I will, I will say in the spirit of kids watching, my seven-year-old, um, sometimes I'll have an episode on while I'm like washing, you know, washing dishes after dinner or something like that. And he will sometimes come in and he'll be like, oh, you're watching Columbo again. And he's like, oh, mama, this is boring. And I'm like, that's okay. It's okay. And then, but then he'll stop and he'll stand there. And like 15 minutes later, he's still watching. And my husband always laughs because he's like, mm -hmm, not so boring now, is it? Yeah. <laughs> So, so here I got a question for, to wrap us here. I'm, I'm curious. We've talked a lot about the kind of qualities of Columbo that we like and the qualities of detectives that we find interesting. Is there, is there a, is there one Columbo moment that you can think of that is just obviously there's many of them that that you have enjoyed, but is there one that just has a kind of a special place in your heart? Maybe it's your favorite moment. Maybe it's a funny moment. Maybe it's a revealing moment. Uh, what's one Columbo moment that you feel like is just just right for you? So there is an episode called Negative Reaction, and it's about a photographer. <laughs> so it's about a photographer, Paul. Gal it's a uh, Dick Van Dyke is the oh, even better, yeah, so good. And and it's a longer episode, and it's like you can just tell Columbo's really. It's a hard one for Columbo to figure out. But I think at the end of that episode, Arlo, I don't know if you remember this, but there's a scene. It's like. He catches Paul, Gale the murderer, and the police take him away. And then there's a scene where Columbo just sits and like slumps over and you just see the back, but he's like really like, it's one of the very few times you see how hard this is for him as a character and how like, oh my God, like that was so much mm. work. And I just think it's like, I just think that's so interesting because in yeah. a lot of the other episodes, it sort of feels like it comes more naturally and this one he had to work for it. And uh, I always like think about that end scene. I'm like, that's, a, that's good. Oh, no, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's a um, specific scene, but I mentioned earlier that there was um, that I enjoyed the moment where the the killer finds out that he or she is actually being um, that Columbo is honing in on them, and all these questions are leading somewhere. Um, there's an equivalent kind of scene when they say to Columbo, "You really are shrewd," or "You." I, I don't know how they, but then he like just downplays it and goes, "No, no, no." I just I'm just asking questions, and he like doesn't make eye contact, and he kind of plays it down and just plays kind of dumb, but he he completely plays down how bright he is, and I, I think that's a that's a really nice uh, moment that reoccurs throughout the shows. Is there a moment you liked, Arlo? 
Mm -hmm. I like a moment where I forgot what it was called, but it was like somebody. Oh, yeah, I think now I know. The like, I think they threw like a toaster while they're like, Uncle was in the bath or something. <laughs> oh, it was an electric then, like, mixer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but then <laughs> that might have been the episode where the, I think the maid, or it might have been a different episode, but a maid was like yelling at Combo because he was very messy. Yeah. <laughs> How about yeah. the episode? Yeah, that was, but he did like everything and then she started screaming. I love that. Yeah, she, he he was getting um, ashes on her. He used a, a, a silver tray for an ashtray and got yelled at. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I like that. That was my favorite moment in that one episode. Yeah, I would love to see the scripts and see how much was. Right. I, mean, I think the reason the, the the first episodes were all so great, or the first several seasons, was because I think there was a lot of improv. I mean, yeah. he came from that school where they did a lot of a lot of improv. And I, I suspect most of that was not written. Like when he yeah. when he goes looking through his pockets and stuff, and I, you know, like I, I think he he was legitimately trying to get people to react in ways that they didn't train for or weren't practiced for. So like there yeah. were times when he'd come back into the room, he'd come different ways <laughs> between takes to get them to get them off like off balance. And I do think there were fantastic actors the first several seasons, and I think they were just playing and having fun. And I think that's mm -hmm. why they got such great um, performances from these people. Haney, do you have any uh, moments in the two episodes that you watched? I, okay. Okay. I do want to say that the episode I watched, Let the Lovely Believe the One, the reason why I liked it is I feel like it was kind of like a feminist mantra. Oh. <laughs> because the villain was this woman who like, figured everything out like right away and then she tried to blackmail this goes back to arlo saying this weekend the two things he learned from colombo are don't murder and don't blackmail <laughs> and she did both she she, blew it. she, she, both. she blackmailed her and because she had found out that she had done it so early and so i just like the whole like you know they're kind of like trying to outsmart each other it was very focused on the women in there and this um the murderer, she was wearing this awesome white jumpsuit. Oh. Okay. <laughs> very she's gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous. gorgeous very, it. very yeah. nice jumpsuit. And she's like talking to Columbo and basically Columbo's like, well, did you date whatever? And she's kind of like, I date a lot of men, okay? Like, why can't I date a whole bunch? And I just like love it because it's, you know, obviously it's like very standard right now, but not back then. I just like that they did all this stuff. So anyway. I like that. That's good. It's very cool. That's great. Well, thank you guys for talking with us about... Uh, Can about you believe we had a whole episode about had... Columbo? You guys, this just makes my heart so happy. <laughs> you have no idea. This has been edited down. This was a seven-hour conversation <laughs> that we had about Columbo. And I'm then just... Nathan was like, okay, guys, we got to go to bed. <laughs> Let's talk point. Batman. We got to at least talk Batman before bed. No. Um, so we have one more segment, and we'd like to, to ask our guests. It, Haney, can you help uh, explain what is... What is the next segment? Sure. Our last segment segment is called What's Poppin'? And basically, we like to ask our guests, what's something that you find really interesting right now? Um, you know, it could be TV, movie, toy, um, something that people are really Video into. Video games. Video games, something that's trending. It could be a book. Some people still like to read, you know. So, <laughs> Sometimes. Um, so what's popping right now in your life that you think other people should know about? Sonali, oh, anything popping for you? I mean, I have. <laughs> okay, but is this is like a judgment-free zone, Nathan, because I have. Well, lot, no, lot... it's not. Okay. Yeah, it's really not. <laughs> I don't know where judgy. you got this idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, beware uh, of whatever you say next. <laughs> I um. Okay. Well, so I do live with a seven-year-old, so I feel like so much of my world is that these days, and I literally spent four hours yesterday with him doing Pokemon related things. And oh, I did my first trade with one of his friends. Like oh, he nice. gave me some cards. So I did my first Pokemon card trade. So anyway, I just feel like I've been very much in Pokemon world lately, which is kind of not, would not have been my thing, but my kid who I'm crazy about is crazy about this. So by extension now, Pokemon, Pokemon is popping. Yeah. Pokemon is popping in my, in my life. <laughs> what, what a good parent. Mark Arlo, anything popping for you guys? Uh, I like Pokemon cards too. Yeah, is there a particular Pokemon you like the best? This one. 
Oh, what oh. is it? Can you tell us what Dark it is? Dark Hypno? Yeah. Oh, whoa, that's a cool card. Okay, Arlo, you just gave me something to go home and tell my kid about. What about hey, you, Mark? Um, my um, popular culture um, interests kind of end in like 84. <laughs> So like I I don't watch a lot of color movies or anything like that. So um just walking, I think. Arlo and I walk a lot. There's a lake near us, so we walk in bird watch. So we walk down and look at herons. So I say green herons are popping. Green herons are popping. Green herons. Um at our lake. Um we see this time of year at least you see at least five or six every time we go. And they are beautiful little birds. And um we love them. So I love I, that. I, I encourage everyone to go find a green heron. Walking and bird watching yeah. is popping. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, poppin'. things, uh, trends are cyclical. So I, I bet in the next like four months, bird watching is going to get huge and green herons are going to be all the rage. And we're going to yeah. be like, Bird Hello. watching is I already mean, bird huge. Bird watching went up a lot during um, oh. COVID. Yeah, obviously. Um, like you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we're like two of the fastest growing. <laughs> Hobbies, I think <laughs> everyone is telling me in this room that bird watching is huge. And bird watching is popping. <laughs> I, listen, I'm always about three years behind on the trend, so that, that tracks. <laughs> but hey, oh, <laughs> uh, fantastic! Thank you guys so much for joining us today. It was really fun to talk with you about your experiences, you know, together watching and exploring this genre. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you, Arlo. Thank you for inviting us. Oh, thank you, thank you, Arlo. Thank you, Mark. This season of Pop and Play was produced by Haney Yoon, Nathan Holbert, Lalitha Vasudevan, Billy Collins, and Joe Rena Ferry, and assistant produced by Lucius Von Jo at Teachers College, Columbia University with the Digital Futures Institute. Audio editing and production by Billy Collins. For transcripts and to learn more about our guests, visit tc.edu slash pop and play. Our music is selections from Leaf Eaters by Poddington Bear. Pop and Play, of course, would not be possible without the fabulous team that helps put this together. Thanks to Oluwashon Animashon for running the Pop and Play social media accounts, where you should follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok under Pop and Play Pod. You can also follow us on Twitch under Pop and Play. Special thanks to Drew Reynolds, Jen Lee, Blake Danzig, Brianne Minato, Moira McCavanaugh, and Lucius Vonjo, who all helped with our outreach and our website support. Shout out to Ioana Literat for the trashies. Watch on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>